All right, guys, welcome back here to First Attack. We are going over with punishes today. And we are talking about, uh, I talked about, you know, how to whiff punish, what you want to look for, and good moves to use as a whiff punish. So, um, now I want to talk about what it is that you're trying to whiff punish, right? So, here we go. What you want to do is look for particularly whiff punishable moves. So, um, if your opponent is trying to poke, trying to zone you out a lot, you kind of want to whiff punish them, but they have to be very whiff punishable. And what qualifies a move as being very whiff punishable? We saw earlier that, you know, Ken's low forward kick, not very easy to whiff punish because it is a pretty fast move, right? And that's what makes uh, the Shoto's really powerful. And in fact, it's what, it's why the nerf to Ryu in AE, where they took away a couple of active frames from his low forward kick, affected it so much. You remember how I had to walk forward to punish um, because they took away some of Ryu's active frames on his low forward kick, it made it easier to have Ryu whiff the low forward kick and then walk in after the active frames ran out. Having more active frames makes it harder to chase the move and punish it afterwards. So in um, 2012, they gave Ryu his active frames back, but here's a little piece of trivia. They took Ken's frames away too from his low forward kick. So they nerfed both Ken and Ryu's low forward kicks in AE, but they only fixed Ryu in 2012. <laughs> Ken's low forward kick is still nerfed to only two active frames, poor guy. But um, so with punishable moves have long delay. So uh, obviously Ken's low roundhouse kick is going to be way easier to whiff punish than it is um, than his uh, low forward kick for example. Um, the best moves to whiff punish are the moves that move the character forward slightly. And I'll show you guys what this means in just a second. And um, you also just have to make sure that you have a normal, like I said, you have to have a good whiff punishing normal. If you're Fuerte, you can see these whiff punishable moves flash in front of your face all day and there ain't nothing you can do about it because your normals are really bad. And even a character who has good whiff punishes, for example, like Ryu, it's going to be really hard to whiff punish a character like Vega because Vega's low claw reaches so far. Because the range of low strong from Vega is so far, after he whiffs it, you can't really sweep him back because he's so far away from you. So, you know, you just have to make sure that uh, the, whiff punish, the move that you're trying to whiff punish does not outclass all of your normal moves. All right, so let's go back over here. And I talked about Cami standing roundhouse. This is a great move to zone. Lots of Camis walk around and hit the stand roundhouse button, right? Because it's a great, it has a lot of priority, good damage, and it's a great way to discourage the enemy. Um, problem with this move is that it's very whiff punishable. So if you notice right here, Adon cannot sweep her at this distance right here. If I stand right here, I can't sweep her, right? Now, what I'm talking about moves that move you slightly forward, this is a perfect example right here. Cammy kind of shifts herself forward when she does this sweep. So if I want to whiff punish this move, I can. You see how I hit it during its delay, and I didn't even have to walk forward. So I'm just standing here right now. If I sweep right here, it misses. But do you see how, like, during her delay, she, she extends herself way far forward. So this becomes a very whiff punishable move. This is a great move to learn to bait and whiff punish. It's very easy for a lot of characters to do that. So here, let me show you guys. So basically what you do is stand, learn your range where you stand right outside of her standing roundhouse. And as soon as you see it, you can counter sweep her. I know this one here because Justin did this to me all day. He, he blew me up. One time we were just playing casually. He just every time I whiffed standing roundhouse, he would he would just basically counter sweep me. Oh, and see perfect example there, right there. You saw how Cammy can't hit me here, but then when I whiffed, she can hit me. So my low roundhouse is also a move that moves me forward. Perfect whiff punishable move. So if I saw Adon whiff a move like if I see Adon whiff a move, 
that's a great way to whiff punish as well. So you kind of have this counter whiff punish between these two. Hardest part about it is that Adon's not going to be whiff punishing that. Uh, he's not going to be throwing a lot of sweeps around. He's actually going to be throwing standing roundhouse a, a lot more. But um, this is a perfect example of a very whiff punishable move, a, a very good move to whiff punish. So, oops. Two player pause, huh? Okay. So again, find a move that your opponent likes to use that has long delays that moves them forward a little bit and make sure you have a move that can counter uh, with punish. And you can see that even from certain ranges, if I can't sweep you like this, right, maybe a stand roundhouse will do it because eight on stand roundhouse reaches way farther. So depending on the range at which I am when she whiffs, I have to adjust the button that I want to use to punish her. You know, if I can get close enough, I can sweep her which is preferable because I get the hard knockdown like that but if I'm a little too far away I can always just do a neutral stand roundhouse to whiff punish like that so okay so what are the pitfalls that a lot of people fall into when they try to do uh, a whiff punish because um, like I said whiff punishing is hard okay all the examples I'm showing you here right now, I'm recording a training mode dummy. I'm completely aware they're going to throw out this move. So I can whiff punish like a god right now. But in real match, I ain't whiff punishing nothing because <laughs> my reactions are slow. Okay, so um, whiff punishing is very difficult. And what you want to do is, if you're not good at whiff punishing, there's a few things that you want to avoid doing because... Um, you're just going to get yourself into more trouble. If you're bad at whiff punishing, don't, don't augment it by doing these things right here, which is trying to whiff punish, first of all, from too far away. This is a, a, a huge problem. A lot of people always try to whiff punish from too far away, right? So here, let me show you guys this really quick. So what happens is, if I try to sweep whiff punish you here, I can't get you but let's say I'm really good at knowing my own distance so I want to walk up and sweep you afterwards like this right so I want to walk up and sweep you like this but I'm trying from too far away because I can't sweep you just outright so what I'm trying to do is that what ends up happening is when you try to whiff punish from too far away if you're too adamant about it you end up falling for this thing that, I, there's no official term for it, but I like to call it the double poke. Um, a good example of this would be for Ken. You know, that low forward kick that I, that I showed you guys earlier that was really hard to whiff punish. So let's use Adon again. Let's go to Ken here, actually. Could probably turn up the game volume. There we go. Okay, so back over here. So let's do that Ken low forward kick again. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to whiff punish this move right here. Oops. Ah! See, now I'm trying to anticipate it. I'm not even trying to react to it. Oh, see, now I'm just doing it too early. This is a very hard move to whiff punish. Um, so what happens here a lot of the times is that because you can't whiff punish it, what a lot of players end up doing is what I like to call the double poke, in which they whiff a move and then they immediately come out with another move right away. Because they recognize the fact their footsies are so advanced, their footsies are so good, that they recognize the distance at which they whiff their move, you can't whiff punish it very easily. And you're going to try to chase in after their move recovers. So what they do is they throw out a second move right away. Like that, right? So you're like, oh, try to whiff punish, and then they get you first. So he whiffs, and then you try to walk up and whiff punish. But they recognize the distance that you're too late. And so they throw out a second poke right away, and then they uh, end up beating your whiff punish attempt. It's because you're too far away or you're too slow. Now, honestly, honestly, like, I dare you to watch some street high-level Street Fighter matches. This double poke thing that I talk about happens all the time. Um, 
you see it you see a lot of really strong players do it like uh vi with ryu will do low forward low forward he'll low forward and it looks like he's punishable but he'll throw out a low forward first and you try to whiff punish and you get hit it happens a lot it happens like you'll see a balrog with a low roundhouse and the opponent's just a little too far away and then all of a sudden he throws out another low roundhouse and catches the guy walking forward that happens a lot so um Seriously, watch some footsies later on, uh, or just on the next stream, and, to, and just keep an eye out for this double poke. It, it, it happens way more often than you think it does. It's a very, very common kind of reaction, reactionary tactic. Of course, the high-level players will expect the double poke and whiff punish the second one, but, you know, then we get into the whole, you know, mishmash of mind games and stuff like that, so. Another big problem is if you're too close. I would demonstrate this to you, but I think I've shown this to you enough already. But basically, you just end up walking into your opponent's move, right? So like I said... Oops, I'm doing that again. So what happens is, you know, you're a little too close. And so when you actually try to whiff punish it, you end up, like, crouching into the low forward kick, for example. So you get hit by it. And so now you can't whiff punish anymore because you're hanging out too close. If you're too close, this is not the range to whiff punish. This is the range to poke. This is the range in which you want to poke them or out-prioritize them. Keep in mind that hitting them like this... Whoops, let me see if I can time this right. Trying to hit them at the beginning of the button press like that, that's... That's not with punishing. That's just straight up out prioritizing their move. That's just beating their move because I have a move that has a better hitbox that beats your low forward kick, right? So if I'm doing this and I beat your low forward like this, this is not a with punish. But if I'm a little too close, this is this is the range in which I want to throw out this move like this. I'm not trying to whiff punish, I'm trying to poke and beat his move and such like that. So um I'm just curious. Yeah, okay. It's not bad. Oh, wow. Really? Dude, that's so good. Holy crap. Adon's low forward kick owns Ken's low forward kick for free. Dang, that's nuts. Okay, there we go. Finally, I lost. Uh, okay. But basically, if you're doing that, that's poking, right? And you're just trying to out-prioritize his move, and now you're opening yourself up to be uh, countered by a whiff punish. So don't be too close when you're trying to do whiff punishes because you would just end up blocking moves like that and you're unable to do so. So the last thing is uh, not knowing your own distance. I talked about this earlier, right? So let's say I'm actually trying to punish um, Ken's low roundhouse kick. What ends up happening if I don't know my range is to whiff punish like this, right? If, I, if I'm really bad at that, what I end up doing is I open myself up to getting whiff punished as well. Let me do a different sequence here. So if I don't know my own, if I don't know my own distancing, I open myself up to get whiff punished. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm at a bad range, and then he can whiff punish me, right? Okay, I did that a little too slow, like that, essentially, but faster. So let's try to record that again. So if I don't know my own ranges, if I'm really bad at adjusting these ranges, I'm going to get myself whiff punish when I try to whiff punish them. And that's not good either. So you want to make sure that you are always within range when you try to whiff punish. You know, try to take that step, make sure you get close enough to sweep him. Like that. So make sure you know your distances so that you'll connect. Because if you try it from too far away, see, I did not know Adon's distance. I do not know Adon's distance too well. So I did it from a little too far away, and I get whiff punished like that. So again, knowing your distance is very, very important. So if your opponent is a whiff punish master, how do you stop this? Like, what are you supposed to do uh, to get to counter this, right? Uh, how are you supposed to prevent the opponent from whiff punishing you all day if you're a pokeaholic, right? If you just like to sit there and hit buttons all day. Well, we already talked about the original one, 
which is walking forward. If your opponent is sitting there trying to whiff punish you all day, what's going to happen is he's going to stand there. Like I said, it takes really fast reaction. So he's just waiting for you to touch a button. As soon as he sees you touch a button, he's going for the whiff punish. Uh, like I said, a character like Akuma, amazing at whiff punishing with his low roundhouse, right? So he's just going to stand there. As soon as you touch a button, he's going to whiff punish you. Um, the thing about it is, because he's waiting for you to hit a button, he's not actually going to poke first. Because he's really trying to whiff punish you. Um, so what happens is that frees you up to walk forward. If you know your opponent is trying to react to someone, just start walking at him. Walk at him to get into your range where your move will no longer whiff. And all of a sudden you can threaten him. Or the other thing that you can do is play their game. Remember I said it's a dance, right? So let me go back here really quick. Um, I will switch the screen. Hang on a second. So if you're playing against your opponent and he's sitting there trying to do this dance to you and he's trying to make sure he's staying outside of my, my sweep range. So he's trying to stay outside of my sweep range, right? Which is about this distance. I'll walk back, he walks forward. I'll walk forward, he walks back. Because he's trying to get me to whiff this so I can whiff punish. So he can whiff punish me. If I'm aware of the fact that he's really trying to whiff punish me that much, what ends up happening is just make sure you walk forward and backwards, but more forward than you do backwards. So while you're playing this dance, you know, you're wiggling back and forth and he's trying to get the same distance here, I will take longer steps forward than I will taking steps back. What ends up, <laughs> what, what this ends up doing is my opponent just pushes himself into the corner. And suddenly, he can't walk back anymore. He doesn't have the ability to control the ranges in which he wants to whiff punish because he's lost one whole direction that he can move. So if you notice your opponent is getting all crazy about whiff punishing, you know, just slowly walk him forward. Don't dash like I just did, but walk forward a little bit more because he's trying to maintain that distance and you can slowly kind of just take him into the corner that way. Um, a lot of times, too, what ends up happening is that um, when you walk forward and the opponent is trying to whiff punish and you walk forward super close to them, your opponent freaks out. Your opponent just like, wait a second, he just walked all the way up to here and he's right next to me. This is when guys like Vi get really good at walking up to you, waiting a second, and then doing low strong with Ryu and getting a counter hit and a kind of frame trapping you, basically counter hit setting, setting you up for a counter hit. They're good at that because they realize they're so good at recognizing when they've entered your uncomfortable zone. When they've entered that distance, when you're, you know, the, the distance of discomfort. It's just like in real life, when some guy walks up to you and talks to you too close. There's this zone in which people just start feeling uncomfortable. Vi, a guy like Vi, Choi, Daigo have played the game long enough that they've recognized this distance especially based on players. So what happens is they will walk up into that distance and as soon as they know they've reached that point where all of a sudden you're very uncomfortable, that's when they throw out their low strong, you throw out your button, you get counter hit and then they get this big old combo on you. Or they'll just walk up to you and just go boom, uppercut, FADC ultra, right? You see that happen so often where someone just walks up to the other guy and then all of a sudden a magic uppercut hits them. And it's because they're playing this footsie game. They walk into the range that your opponent feels uncomfortable and they know they just want to touch a button because they freak out. Nobody likes blocking in that position, for some, especially nowadays because people just don't block for some reason. But um, that's perfect time to land something like uppercut FADC Ultra. So good way to... Stop whiff punishing, walk forward. That's definitely a part of footsies, one of the most fundamental parts of footsies. Use safer moves. Okay, uh, let me show you a good example of this. Because there's a reason why I showed you Adon versus Cami a while ago. So let's do... Let's go over here. <laughs> Damn straight back in my day. <laughs> back in my day, people used to block. But I know it's absolutely true, though. 
Uh, like, I mean, look at Viper players, man. They never block when they get up. They're always doing EX burn kick, seismo faint, uh, EX seismo thunder knuckle, something backdash. Like, they never block. It's crazy, dude. So, in any case here, what I want to show you is... I showed you this before that I was able to whiff punish this pretty easily, right? Like this. Because it moves Kami forward and it has a long delay. Now, what I mean by use safer moves is if you'll notice something here. Here's my stand roundhouse for Kami right here, right? You'll actually notice her standing forward isn't that much shorter. It actually hits pretty decently at the same range. It's not that much worse range than Standing Roundhouse is. Standing Roundhouse maybe hits a tiny bit further, but not by much, right? And what you're really trying to do is zone, right? You're really trying to control space. That's why you're poking. So Cami standing forward actually turns out to be a very, very, a much safer move. So let's go back and play back again, and I'll show you why. Because Cami standing forward not only is faster, but it doesn't move her as far forward. So at this range where I'm going to miss, it's, I, I mean, I can still hit her here. Whoops, not with Stand Roundhouse. But it's a lot harder to hit. Oh, I'm not even blocking with her, so I'm just hitting her out of her recovery. So let me do this really quick just to illustrate this a little bit better. And block. So it's a lot harder to whiff punish this move because at ranges where I could easily punish the stand roundhouse, I cannot punish this. See how it doesn't move her as far forward? So I'm just going to stand in one place and I missed right there. But now I'm going to record her once again doing stand roundhouse and I play this back. And now I'm going to be able to get her every single time, right? So again, one good way to counter people who like to whiff punish, use safer moves. For when I played Justin in this fight, I used standing roundhouse. Like I said, he blew me up. And when I switched to stand forward, it got a lot better. He couldn't whiff punish me as badly. He still beat me, but it just wasn't as oppressive as him sweeping me all day. So use safer moves. Again, some moves don't move the character as far forward. Last one is, remember, they're reacting to everything, right? You, it's, it's so underrated how much fake poking works. When you see a lot of top-level players going around, they'll, they'll do stuff like this a lot. They, like, hit jab or low jab or low kick like this. So what they're trying to do is they're baiting you to try to whiff punish me. So... Like, let's say, uh, I'm trying to mimic this distance, this timing, like that. So basically, like, for example, if I do, as soon as I see her crouch and I try to sweep her, she'll be able to whiff punish me, right? Let me do this a little bit better. So, crouch, oops, crouch, roundhouse, like that. So what happens is, let's, let's try to pretend this is a real match here, okay? And um, what she's doing is baiting me to do that, to sweep, and then whiff punish me like this, right? So, like that. But, if I try to fake her with that, now I can counter whiff punish her. So I'm like, oh, whiff punish me! But then I throw out a move that recovers so fast that she can't get me, and now I get the whiff punish. Like that, for example. So fake poking is very important. It keeps the opponent guessing what you're trying to do, trying to figure out exactly uh, when to whiff punish you properly. If you're always using good buttons, that's a problem. And um, just as a side note, in that same session that I was playing against Justin, um, every time I did the way fake pun fake whiff. I did it by hitting jab, and again, this is not an online problem, this is an offline problem. This is what happens when you play in tournaments. But he noticed when I tried to whiff jab, I hit the button really hard, like really loud, like I hit it loud, 
like I'm really trying to get him to notice it. But then when I whiff the standing roundhouse, I would hit the button soft because I'm trying to like hide it. So he noticed every time I hit the button hard, he would never try to whiff punish me. <laughs> so if he saw me twitch and it was accompanied by a loud button press, he'd do nothing. But as soon as he see my character do a move and he didn't hear the button, he would sweep me every time. And he told me that after. He was like, every time you, f you, try, to w you try to fake me with jab, you're hitting the button super hard. So, dude, it's <laughs> little things like that, man. Little things like that that I would have never noticed if he had never told me. So, crazy stuff. Um, another one is jump. Um, we've talked about, you know, Street Fighter 4, don't jump in at your opponent. It's a bad idea, right? But you want to know the right moments to jump. But when your opponent's trying to whiff punish you, he's thinking so hard about that whiff punish that he's not thinking about your jump. Especially with a character, you know, with uppercuts and stuff like that. They'll be walking around trying to maintain that distance and then you jump all of a sudden. They're like, uh-oh, I was trying to whiff punish and they jumped. Now I'm scared. I can't react with my uppercut fast enough, and you get on. You you get you, you can actually get in through the jump. So that's a good way to do it too. But remember, if you want to do that, if you want to do that to your opponent, you do not. Okay, let's just say Cammy is trying to whiff punish me here. Let's go back to the screen. So let's say Cammy is trying to whiff punish me here, and I'm standing at this distance right here. Because this is my maximum jump range. Like, this is my best jump range possible. If I'm standing at my best jump range possible, I'm kind of giving it away that I want to jump in on him. So, this is not necessarily effective. Which is actually why you'll see a lot of people walk into a little bit closer than optimal jump range and then jump. It's a little bit awkward distance, more awkward distance, but it's harder for the opponent to read. So, while they're sitting there trying to whiff punish me, I'll take a step, jump forward like this. So I walk into this non-optimal jump range. They see me walk forward. So they're like, oh, he's coming at me. Then all of a sudden you jump. So not only are they looking for a whiff punish, they see you walk forward. Then they get freaked out. And then you jump all of a sudden. That makes it even harder for them to react with an anti-air properly. So lots of little diversionary ways to uh, blow that up. And not only that, you get a jump in. Now all of a sudden you have all this frame advantage because they're stuck in block stun. You're not playing footsies anymore because you have all the advantage because you're landing and walking and they're stuck in block stun and now you've got mix-ups for days. So jumping is another good way uh, to stop it. Oh yeah, Cammy's stance is the best because she sneezes like that. Oh, it's so funny. But um, she should really put on some pants, dude. But um, that is a, that is a good way to counter um, uh, with punishes. So uh, let me take a break real quick, and I will come back. And when I do, uh, I'll finish wrap this up a little bit and see if anybody has any questions. We will be right back. Whoa, is that for is that for Cane Blue River? Jeez. But uh, yeah, we don't we don't want that. Oh, let's see here. Get rid of this, get rid of this. Okay, there we go. All right, guys, we'll be right back.